something a bit different today and I've actually been issued a challenge by a fellow YouTuber, that YouTuber being Daz, otherwise known as Cojones de Loro, and he issued me the challenge of trying to get his Mega Drive uh, running again and this is it here. I got it the other day in the post. The problem with this is he was saying the motherboard is cracked on it so uh, I don't know if it's completely dead or it's not working uh, properly or what. I'll double check that in a minute but yeah apparently the motherboard on it's cracked and it's kind of seen better days anyway you can see it's all a bit scuffed and looking a bit sorry for itself but yeah, he issued me, issued me the challenge to see if I could get this running again, and I uh, accepted. And I thought it'll be a, kind of a fun little project to to have a go at. So what I'm going to do here is first of all I'll hook this up and just make sure uh, that it's not working. Try and see if there's any signs of life at all. Then I'll strip it down and see what we're dealing with. See if there's a a, a major problem with that motherboard or. Uh, if it can be repaired. Hopefully it's just a case of patching a few traces and getting it running again. But yeah, This is a Japanese Mega Drive and from what Daz tells me it's one of the ones that was a, um, an Asian PAL conversion. So if you don't know what that means I'll maybe leave a link in the description below. Basically back in the day distributors used to buy Japanese Mega Drives and then convert them for the uh, PAL Asian market and that meant uh, basically butchering the inside of the console and putting in like an RF adapter and all sorts so it's probably going to be looking a little rough inside and I'd imagine there's maybe some components missing as well but anyway I'll get to taking this thing apart and see what kind of condition it's in. I've got my copy of Shadow Dancer on the machine right now, I've got it all hooked up to the TV and there's absolutely no signs of life at all. The Power LED isn't coming on, there's nothing on the screen, and uh, yeah, completely dead. So, first step is to strip it down and take a closer look. I've got my toolkit here ready to go in my Sega branded tool bag, customised of course. So, everything I need should be right here, and I've just got the console sitting on the floor. I'm gonna do this video a bit more ad hoc than usual. I just want to get this repaired and back to Daz as quickly as possible. So. Just going to throw the, the camera up into the tripod and start taking this thing apart. Should also mention this is meant to be covered completely by a, a big RF metal shield and that's completely missing. There's also loads of screws missing. There should be screws, I'm not sure here, but there should be screws all the way around this motherboard here. But there's, I mean, this one's not being screwed down properly here and there's only one screw on the cartridge slot there should be two there should be one at either end there to keep that nice and secure but yeah this is the, the problem of these PAL Asian Mega Drives after the conversion they're done really cheaply and they basically half destroy the, the console in the process let's take a look at this damage to the motherboard here and I hope this comes across on camera okay and we need to take it off the tripod but there's a, a huge crack that runs all the way from this edge here right across and it ends just about here. I'll try and give you a close up of the damage here so this is where the, the crack starts at this side of the, the motherboard and it runs across here underneath this capacitor. It's gone through these traces here and runs across to the switch and across these three traces underneath the capacitor here and then off towards the, the centre of the board. Luckily it hasn't really got any further than about here. So not too bad on the top side but if I flip it over this is what we're dealing with on the underside of the, the motherboard. It's not looking quite as easy to, to repair. So here's the, the crack running from the side, it's running through these traces here. I can really get any closer than that. There we go. So you can see that the damage is a missing component here. I'm not sure uh, what that would have been, probably a, a little resistor. 
and it comes along here across these traces and kind of ends around here. So I'll need to rep replace that component, but on top of that, there's also uh, the damage done by the, the conversion. So there's a big blob of solder here with a, a resistor. You can see there's bits of solder just falling off of that. So that will need to be sorted out. And where's it gone? Yeah, here. You can see there's missing, I'm guessing these would have been capacitors. Two of them missing there and a lifted trace. So it doesn't look so good so far. There's also big blobs of solder and looks like hot glue or something has been stuck in the board. And I've just noticed that the crack not only goes that way, it also goes back that way as well. So let's take a look here. You probably won't be able to see it too well, but actually you can maybe make it out on these traces here. So it runs down the, the length of the board this way as well. And that's a little worrying because on this side of the board you've got this IC. And you probably won't be able to see this, but it runs underneath this IC, which I believe is maybe something to do with the the sound. It says Sony on it and it's next to the the headphone jack. So again, need to take a closer look at that. Fast forward a couple of hours and I'm almost finished with the repair. You can see I've made a, a bracket here and it doesn't look too pretty but it should do the, the job. What I did is I got a piece of RF shielding and I just I bent it to shape and clipped over the, the edge of the motherboard there to stop it from that crack from flexing and I've hot glued it into place and then soldered it onto the, the ground plate but I've bridged all the the broken traces, or most of them anyway uh, there's a few components missing from the underside of the, the motherboard I've removed the big blob, blob of solder that was there and the, the resistor so I'm going to need to work out what components are, are missing from the board and to do that I dug out my parts board from the, the shed here this thing is totally knackered so don't worry that I'm <laughs> uh, ruining a, a good uh, console to fix another one this was a, a board I must have got from a, a job lot ages ago you can see it's completely destroyed and there's loads of components missing from it because I've used this quite a few times for repairing other consoles but what I'll do is I'll look over this and find out which components are, are missing from this board here so the only thing is these boards are slightly different so the, the, the components are going to be uh, maybe different values and whatnot but I'll give it a shot anyway so I'm going to quickly hook this up and see if we're getting any signs of life yet hopefully we'll, we'll get something got it all hooked up to the TV again and I've got a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog in the Cartridge Bay so if I just Flip this on, see what we get. And as you can see, it is working, kind of, but the colours are way off. And if you listen to that, the music's all kind of distorted and doesn't sound quite right. So, I'm gonna need to work out what components are missing from the bottom of the board, and hopefully, replacing those will sort it all out again. But so far, it's looking good, at least we've got some signs of life. And I've also modded it back to Japanese mode, so it's in full screen now, there's no borders, and it's running full Fast screen. Fast forward another couple of hours, and I think I've finally got the console back up and running again the way it should be. And I'll be honest, it gave me a bit of a headache. The sound in the, uh, the motherboard here, I just couldn't get to come back properly. I could get the video up and running, no problem. I managed to replace all those missing components and get that working. But for some reason, the... Uh, the audio just kept distorting and you could literally just touch the board a tiny amount and it would just go nuts. So I had to go over all those traces again and I'll need to put the light on the camera here because it has to get dark outside. And it's not too pretty but you can see I've got all the uh, the traces just patched with wires now. Instead of just bridging them I had to get wire and actually go over each one and uh, reattach them that way. There's some wires underneath the board here as well. You can maybe see them there and of course all those components were replaced but after I did that it seemed to bring the sound back properly so fingers crossed that's it <laughs> now working again and what I'll do is I'll just test it out so I've got my
cartridge of Sonic the Hedgehog in there again. I've got it hooked up to the TV, so if I just hit the power button. And there we go, we've got full colour and sound. Just change the aspect ratio on the TV here. Looks great. Running in full speed, full screen. I've actually got the headphones hooked up to it right now, so having to test that. That works fine as well with the, the volume slider. So final thing to do now is just put all this back together again, give it a clean and then one last test and get it back to that. That's everything fully reassembled now and I've given it a quick wipe down and now I'm just testing that the console works as it should before I send it back to Daz. So I've got my copy of Bare Knuckle 3 in there which is basically the Japanese version of Streets of Rage 3 and it works fine as you can see there. It's all in Japanese as you'd expect. So what I'll do is I'll play this for let it run for a couple of hours just to make sure it's all working properly but so far it seems to be fine so I'll get this back off to Mr. Cojones de Oro as quickly as I can. Definitely gave me a bit of grief in the middle part of the repair there with the sound issues but got that all sorted in the end and overall yeah I'm pretty happy with the way it all turned out so Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.